Hi, this is Tom with Compix, and today I'm going to show you how to create this 3D sports graphic in Compix Persona. Today we will be covering rectangle aspects, 3D depth, rotation, object intervals, position, slant, grouping, and textures. And without any further ado, I'll begin. I will start by creating the top of my sports bar. This will be broken down into four separate shapes. I will click my rectangle shape button and click in my window to begin creating my shape. I have some certain dimensions which I will use for my project to make sure I obtain the same look as my sports bar. As this tutorial progresses you'll notice my logo will be the only object that won't be 3D. I will make sure my corners are adjusted so that my shape has a rounded look. My first shape's depth will become the length of my object. The x-axis will be adjusted so that you really get a 3D feel out of your object. As I adjust my rotation, you'll see why my depth was so large. Adjusting your z-axis will allow you to change the layering of your 3D objects. I am now going to click on my texture tab and apply a metallic looking map which will shine with movement. You'll notice I will use the same map for the top portion of my sports graphic. I'm now going to create my second shape for my sports graphic. I will readjust my slant on my shape and the rotation for a more 3D look. I'll adjust my Z position for layering 3D objects. You'll notice how width, height, and depth will change my shape entirely. Note that my corners are already rounded. When you create a new shape, it will often apply aspects from your previously selected shapes to your new shape. I will now create my third shape. For this object, I will adjust the rectangle's inner value. Notice how my corner is already adjusted for me and rounded to the same number as my previous item. I'm going to make some minor adjustments to my shape in my Style Size tab, and now I'll adjust my slant and my Z position. Next I'll apply a slight gray color and mix in a texture. The texture will be the same texture as I used for the previous two items. I am now ready to create my last shape for the top of my sports graphic. I will create another rectangle shape and I will resize the shape accordingly. My slant will match my last item I created. This specific item will be placed in the middle of my previous item. I will then make some slight changes to my other corner and z-axis. I will select a specific blue which I've pre-chosen. I am now going to make sure my item is placed in the center of my previously created item. From this distance it will be very hard to make sure that my layer isn't overlapping my previously created layer. I will use my middle scroll mouse button to zoom in and make sure my object is aligned properly. Once my shapes are in the correct positions, I will group them together by selecting each item, right clicking and pressing group. Now that my layers are positioned, I can tell that one of my grouped items that I just created is poking through one of my previously created shapes. I will readjust the z-axis to make sure that it does not poke through. I'm going to make one last quick color change and I'm ready to go. After zooming in with the middle mouse button, you can refit your page at the top bar. I will slightly reposition the bar and prepare some text for my graphic. I want to make sure my text is 3D and I want to readjust the depth. Next I'll adjust the Z position and the rotation of my object. Since my dark gray object has its Y rotation adjusted, I will need to readjust my Y rotation for my text. I am now going to group my text and my dark gray bar together and give them a slant. 
I will be making sure that my grouped item here has the same rotation as my other items. This is why my grouped item was poking through the shape earlier. I am now ready to create the shape which I'm going to duplicate 11 times. I will start by creating a rectangle and adjusting the dimensions. I'm going to adjust my depth to 690. The depth will actually become the length once I rotate my object. I will change my Y rotation to 110 so that you can tell it's 3D. My Z axis will be adjusted and my corner will be readjusted as well. Next I'll drop a texture onto my object which will be a different metallic map than I used for my previous items. I am now going to make my last and final shape which is made up of two separate but closely identical shapes. Once my size is correct I'll change my color. Now that my color is changed I'm going to change the corner to zero and copy my item. I will make one shape have a slant and I'll leave the other shape with no slant. It will take me a moment to realign these objects. You can also use the alignment tools to my right. I will then group these two items together. I will change my X and Y axes so that it matches my previously created shape. And I'll readjust the Z axis to my grouped item so that it may protrude through my other shape. After I align these objects, I'm going to make sure that I fit my page again into the window. I'm now going to group these two shapes together and make copies. I will make 11 copies of our main shape. I will use Control C to copy and use Control V to paste. Once our items are pasted, I'm going to change our object's intervals vertical. To readjust these shapes any further or closer together, you can use your arrow keys near the numeric keypad. To speed my tutorial up, I'm going to copy my top sports bar and paste it into a window with my formation already created. You'll notice I've entered text for my athletes' names. I've created some text, made sure the text has the correct size, and made sure it's in 3D. I've also adjusted my rotation and my Z axis for my text so that they sit above my shapes. My last action will be to import my target animation making sure to click on sequence images and changing my stop frame to 114 because my stop frame will need to match my first frame. This way when I select loop my object will look like one long media file. An easy way to make sure your text is properly aligned is to click in the top bar here which will create alignment bars. You can get rid of them by clicking on them and dragging them away from the bar. If you have any questions, please email us at support at compix.tv or feel free to visit our website, compix.tv. Thank you.